Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games, back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. This is Data East's Hook Pinball Machine. We did a couple videos on this exact same pinball machine, uh, probably a year and a half ago, something like that. And the owner has brought it back to us, he wants us to mess with it some more. So, it's got two things that I know of. One is, he said a bunch of stuff over here is not working right, I've got it written down. And uh, the sound is all screwed up. So he wants us to put a new soundboard in it. So we're going to do that. We'll probably do that on a separate video just so we can show that thing off. But we're going to order a brand new soundboard for it and uh, take it from there. But we've got to fix whatever the other problem is with it. I'll get out the paperwork and see exactly what he was saying it was doing. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take the back glass out so that we can look at the boards and make sure everything made the trip all right. And then I'm going to take the glass out so we can look underneath the play field, make sure nothing's messed up down there before we turn it on. So let me slide the back glass out and we'll see what's back behind there. Everything looks good. I don't see anything tripping. There's no batteries in it. Hmm. I don't know if it's, I don't see a mod to get rid of the batteries, but maybe. Uh, it has a brand new power supply. All of the wiring looks cool. Doesn't look like anything got damaged or anything while moving it. So I think we're good there. Let me slide the playfield glass off. All right, folks, I lifted it up and looked in there. Let's see if I can do it while holding the camera. I don't see anything crazy going on. It looks good. I always just check just to make sure nothing is laying on top of a fuse or something crazy. Everything looks pretty good to me. He's saying that there's a bunch of stuff over here that's not working right, so we're going to figure that out. Where we should. Um, something about the skill shot here. So you make one, two, or three, something happens there. So we're going to figure it out. Let's plug it up. I have no clue if it's turned off or not. It must be. All right. So I'm going to turn it on and be ready to turn it off if we need to. Okay, so there's the soundboard problem. Hey, 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 pick up high. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate the Peter Pan. Look at this. Okay, let me set up the tripod and we'll play it for just a minute and see what works and what doesn't. All right, let's try it. I've got the coin door open because the lock fell apart. I don't know if that's going to... That might be the whole problem. Well, that's the first problem. Ball lands in there and will not fire. Let's see, though, if, it's a, if the problem is the solenoids are all out. No, the solenoids are fine. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. Okay, so there we go. The ball lands in there and won't shoot back out. He, I think that's what he said uh, was going on. That would cripple the game because if it lands in any of those three holes, it falls back down there. So let me see if it's laying on the switch or not. Okay, it just did a ball search. And it is not finding it. It even kicked another ball out just now. So what does that mean? That means that coil is dead, dead Fred. So it's not the switch, it's the coil. So here is the coil in question. So when the ball lands in the one, the two, the three, if it went all the way up to the three, it hits this switch, and then this switch, and then this switch, and then finally comes to rest on that last switch. And then once it says, oh great, everything worked good, this pulls in. 
and kicks the ball back. That coil has been replaced at some point. I think a lot of these have. And it looks just fine. But there, I don't know about the solder there. But we'll check that. So it is a yellow and purple wire. Which it looks like is the voltage. Because see how this one uses the same color. And then this one uses a purple and blue wire. This one has a purple and yellow wire. So that's the, the, the ground wire going back to the boards. So somewhere there is a fuse. Maybe that fuse is blown. Um, so I'm going to get a multimeter and we'll check across the coil and just see what kind of measurement we get there. All right, so I've got it on ohms. 3.9 ohms. That's pretty good. But that's from lug to lug. It doesn't necessarily mean that the wires um, are getting are, are making good contact. So we'll, I'm just going to pull the that back a little bit and try to check at least where I can kind of see a wire. Yeah, it looks like it's fine. So I don't see a problem with that coil. It looks pretty good. So uh, probably bad connection on a wire. Could still be the switch, I guess. But if it did that ball search, surely they would fire that coil. So they probably tried to fire the coil and it didn't fire. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check the connections on the wiring. And then we're going to check the connection on the actual MPU and check the fuse. All right. So, on the bottom of the CPU board, you have this row of TIP-102 and TIP-122 transistors. Okay? So the way this works is, there is a peripheral interface adapter, a 6821 up higher, that tells some logic chips to turn on this little pre-driver transistor which then tells the bigger transistor to turn on, which then connects ground through these cords down to this board. I don't know if you can see the board below it. The board below it there. Right, so PIA, logic chips, pre-driver transistors, second pre-driver transistor, large transistors. These transistors are running 50-volt uh, coils, so that coil in particular is a 50-volt coil. Now you might say, how do you know all this? Because I looked in the freaking manual, that's how. I've worked on all this stuff before, but it's hard to keep remember all of this crap, right? But if you look in the manual, you go, oh yeah, I remember how that works. So the one in question is Q2. That is the one that shoots out. Ironically, that one has been replaced at some point. It's the only one that's been replaced. Okay, and then the up here, the TIP-122 or TIP-102 that is in question is this fifth one right here. And then the little pre-driver before it, and then it's going to be one of these logic chips, and then either this PIA or this PIA. Oh, by the way, notice that it did boot right up without batteries, so there must be a, a uh, RAM mod in here. Okay, so... Uh, there's an easy way to test these big transistors. I tested them with a multimeter that seemed fine, but here's the, the more fun way. You take an alligator lead and you connect it to ground, and then you ground the tab of the tip 102s. So I have shot the ball, and it is laying in that, that spot where it's been stuck. Now, if I take this alligator clip and ground one of these coils, it makes the coil fire. So, for instance, I don't know what that one does. That's making flashers come on. Right? So, if I touch the one that, that we have the problem with, If I can find the one that we have a problem with. 
And yes, I'm getting sparks. seeing all kinds of flashers turn on. You may not be catching on the camera. Flasher. 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 That one ain't doing nothing. It doesn't seem like Kind of relay. Flasher. 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 Which one is that? Alright, so we got two or three there that aren't doing anything. Hmm. That didn't tell us much. All right, folks, so whenever I grounded the tabs, uh, we got, we did not get the thing kicking, but we did get the flasher on. So the flashers that light when I was grounding the tab of the transistor were these two. Notice they are not flashing now. So we're doing the flasher test. And those two are not flashing, although they did whenever I hit the, uh, the transistor. So let me show you why that is. So if you look in the manual in this area, you'll see that there's all these solenoid drives from the CPU. So that's what we were just testing. It's all of these cues. We were grounding all of these, which is turning each one of these on. So when I got down to this one, it made the flashers light up but it did not make the ball kick, okay? And then you notice there was only one or two uh, coils that we heard it doing anything. We could hear a relay doing something, blah, blah, blah. But all of them were making flashers come on. So if you look at, for instance, solenoid driver four, it comes over here and it runs through two diodes. One of them runs through a resistor and then it says 4R. And then another one comes up here to connection six and runs over here to Q2. That is the transistor that turns on the big kick. That's what that thing is called on the right that is not working. So the way the big kick gets its voltage is 50 volts DC L. Okay. So if we go down. There are these two relay contacts here. This is a relay. There is 50 volts DCL, normally closed. So that's where it's getting its power for that particular coil. Okay, if this relay were to pull in, it would move this switch over to here, which would put 50 volts on these, normally open, DCR. On this particular game, nothing uses DCR. But that relay is tied as well to this one. So on this one, so there's two switches on the relay, two sets of switches. So on this one, you have either 32 volt L or 32 volt R. So we need the 50 volt to be L, so we need the relay to be to the left. And then 32 volt L and R is down here. If you look, here are all the flash bulbs. And they are all powered by 32 volt DC R. So you see the issue. The coil fires if the relay is to the left, the flasher fires if the relay is to the right. 
And they've done that on purpose, obviously. That's a way to multiplex and get twice as many solenoid lines um, with the same amount. And so these over here are also ran by 32 volt DCR. So for a flasher to light, the relay has to be to the right, but for the coil to kick, the relay has to be to the left. So what does that mean? Well, that means when I was getting the flashers to all light, we were testing our uh, that big power board, the tip 36 or whatever. Oh, you know what? We weren't testing it because it doesn't run through that. Hmm, we were testing our wiring basically. But we were not able to test our tip 36 because we don't have the relay throwing the power to the left. It's obviously on the right, which is why all of the uh, <laughs> all of the flashers are working. Hmm. So that's not going to work for us. But have no fear, we don't need to do that because we just figured it out. When you turn it into flasher, flasher test and you're cycling the flashers, the two that were turning on whenever I was hitting that tip 102 are not turning on right now. So you got to think the machine's trying to turn them on, but it's not able to turn them on. But we were able to turn them on whenever we just grounded the, um, the tip 102. So what's that tell you? It tells you that all the wiring must be fine because it worked whenever we shorted it out. But when the computer tries to short it out, it can't. So the problem's on the freaking CPU board. Worst place for the problem to be because that board's huge. But I'm going to go ahead and pull it out, and then we'll test that TIP-102, and hopefully swapping that will fix our problem. So these are the solenoid transistors. And it is the... Uh, that one that's sticking out there a little bit. This one. We'll test it and see how it comes in. All right, so we're on diode test. We'll check this sucker. See if I can figure out how to. All right, with the ground on the middle and the red on the outside, you get a voltage drop. 0 0.46, 0 0.57, 0 0.5. 0 0.589, 0 0.46, oh god, that ain't good people, that's the one that's supposed to be screwed up, 0 0.5, 0 0.587, so I'm looking for anything between about 0.4 and about 0.7. And we're going to test all of them, just why not while we're here. We've got dirt all over me. I've been working on stuff, people. Don't worry about it. I don't know why y'all brought that up. So think about it. Could it? Can it be a bad wiring thing? Nope. Can't be a bad wiring thing, people. Because when you ground the tab of the transistor, it works. So ground gets all the way from that little transistor, all the way to the coil. Well, all the way to the flasher. And it did it over and over and over again. I checked it over and over and over again. Definitely was working. All right, all of those test good. Tip 102s are like a dollar. It might be worth just swapping the thing just to make sure, but but I don't know about that. Okay, so then the bottom three here. See these four things? The bottom three are the pre-driver of what they're using as a pre-driver. <laughs> So those can be tested as well. Let's see how to do that. We're looking for bad reading. See, see how this says 0 0.327? And that one says 0 0.9. So is that one bad? 
we don't know if that one's bad because we haven't compared it to any of the other ones yet. That might just be how they those compare. So if I reverse them, 0 0.327, 0 0.9, or did I just do them the same way they were? Okay, yeah, so there we go. So that's the one. Or maybe if I do it. Yeah, so there we go. So if I measure with the black lead on the bottom, the other two legs should give me around 0.6 or, you know, as long as it's between 0.4 and 0.7, it's probably fine. So we're just trying to see if they all are similar. The reason that I'm doing it this way, instead of looking up all of the math and figuring out exactly how it's supposed to test, is because you've got 16 very similar, pretty much identical circuits if the boards are removed from the game. So with nothing connected, all of these circuits are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter how they're supposed to work. The one is supposed to work just like the one right next to it. So you don't need to even know what the thing is. I mean, you kind of do. It's a transistor. That's all I really need to know. And so I'm testing it how you would test a transistor. And just trying to see if it's bad. And by the way, I already went by that one and it doesn't seem bad. So we got to go back even farther. I don't know, folks. I don't see anything obvious. I tested the coil already, by the way, so I know the coil itself is fine. I grounded the coil. If you just ground the ground wire on the coil, if it's got power on the other side, it pulls in. And the coil pulled in just fine. So, um, yeah. So, uh, hmm. I guess it could be the... Hmm. Yeah, see, it, I, it has to be something on this board. Because in psych in uh, flasher test, it does not flash the flashers on that line, and it flashes all the other ones. So it's got to be something on this board. Okay, so once it goes past this, it goes through a resistor. I'm not even going to check the value of the resistor. Now, why would I not check the value of the resistor? Because it doesn't matter. There's 16 of them that are identical. So the value of the resistor should be what the one next to it is, or close to it. It's telling me it's 67 ohms. That's fine. All right, so I need to trace it back even farther and see what um, I see. Integrated circuit turns it on. Once you're back to that level, you could use a logic probe too, or a scope if you prefer that. I do not. <laughs> I do not. Boo, down with scopes, boo. <laughs> because I can, people, that's why I say stuff like that, because I can. Don't worry about it. Okay, so see what we're doing here? We check this. Is good according to my, my multimeter. Now, here's the kicker it could be bad. You know, it, sometimes they fail where you can run a, you know, a tenth of an amp through it with these probes, but you can't run 5 volts, 12 volts, whatever it's running off of through it. But we think this is good. And then we went up here to the pre driver. We think it's good. Each one of these pre drivers is connected to here, which looks suspiciously like a resistor network. And then, um, I'll bet on the top of the board, each one of these is connected to something. Well, I know they will be. Um, so, eventually, that's going to run back up here to these support chips. And so, it could be we've got a screwed up support chip. Now, notice that they have replaced the questionable transistor before. And they had replaced the questionable tip 36 before. So, it could be that that all got screwed up before. And it damaged 
the IC up here, the pre-driver, but the thing was still working, so they left it, and now it has uh, done the proverbial... I want to say that it's <clears throat> the bed, but I can't say that on YouTube. They're not going to let me. If my brother Donnie was here, he'd say it. You know about my brother Donnie, right? My brother has a channel here on YouTube. He's crazy. He's worse than me, right? So I work on arcade games, pinball machines, jukeboxes. My brother Donnie works on old buildings, old cars, and he has a farm with goats, chickens, and cows. It's a wonderful thing. So check out his channel if you haven't. I'm over there with him a lot. All right, so I'm going to figure out which one of these... It runs too, and see what we can do about that. So I tracked it back up to this 7408, and I measured the pins with the diode check between the 7408 next to it. You know, so basically, if you put like the ground on uh, the voltage, and then put the red on the pins, you can check the voltage drop on all of the pins between it and the one next to it. That's the exact same chip in the exact same type of circuit. And it measures fine. So I can't find anything that measures bad. The 6821 could be bad. But to check all that stuff, we're going to have to use the Logic Pro. But just to possibly save me from putting, taking the board out and putting it back in, um, I have swapped the TIP-102 that was in there. So I put a new one in. And then I checked continuity to make sure everything's touching well. So this center leg is the tab. When we were grounding the tab, we were just grounding the line going out to the coil, all right? So we were just short-circuiting it. We weren't necessarily testing this by doing that. We, I mean, we definitely weren't testing this by doing that. Now it tests fine with my multimeter, but it might be a fluke. Maybe it wasn't in there very well. Maybe it's actually bad and it, it, uh, it tests good, but we'll see. So I swapped it just on the odd chance that that is the problem. These things do go bad a lot. They go bad like candy. So... We'll try it. So I'll put it back in, see if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll have to hook up the Logic Probe and test these support chips and the 6821 PIA peripheral interface adapter chip and see uh, where we're losing the signal. All right, I got it all back in there. Let's check it out. Maybe we'll get lucky. Now, do you hear the sound? That's driving this guy crazy. <laughs> so he's like, get me the new board. I have got to have the new board that's driving me nuts. Such a cool game. It wants you to hit the number two skill shot. But if the ball gets stuck, it doesn't matter which skill shot you hit. One. Hey, it did it. Flipper's tripping though. The flipper was kind of working and kind of not working. Okay, so it did it one time. Let's see if it'll keep doing it. Might have got lucky. It's all coming back to me how fun this game was. Oh, look at that. Good ball. Yeah. Left flipper's working pretty good now, too. That's got to be annoying while you play it. wonder why that would be. Hmm. Might need to replace this rubber ring with a different one. All right, let's try it one more time. Oh, there we go. Cool. I think we fixed it, folks. All right. All right, so I'm going to mess with this left flipper. And then we're going to play it to make sure everything works. Um, what do we have here? They didn't match. Okay, so just to review the PIA. What would the world be like without Captain Hook? I don't know. It'd be a horrible place. Tick tock, tick tock, Captain Hook. Tick tock, Captain Hook. Uh, this PIA here, or the CPU, which is here, 
6802, tells the 6821, hey, turn on that solenoid. The PIA says the, per the peripheral interface adapter says, okay, I will. And then through this buffer, it tells this 7408 to turn on this pre-driver, which tells this transistor to turn on, which tells that transistor to turn on, which turns on the kicker. So the, pro the, the problem is trying to figure out if the problem is the coil, the wiring to the coil, the power to the coil, or the ground through the transistor, through the transistor, the other transistor, the uh, uh, support chip, I'll call it, 7408, the buffer, or the PIA, or even the CPU. Now, if it was the CPU, nothing would work right. So it could have it could have been a line coming off the PIA. The PIA could be where it doesn't have a one of the lines. The outputs isn't working right. It could have been the buffer. It could have been the support chip. But out of all of these, the most likely for it to be is that TIP 102. Those burn up all the time. Those are the same ones that are on um, all the Bally pinball machines. What a cool game. Okay, let me look at the left flipper a little bit, and then we'll play it and make sure everything works good. And we're cycling the flashers again, and as you can see now, the top left flashers are working fine. So I, it could have just been that thing wasn't making good connection. I don't know. It's new now, though. All right, folks, we're going to test it out a little bit. Hook, 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 hook. Um, the sound acts up a little bit. You hear some popping and stuff. It's driving the customer crazy, so he wants to buy a whole new soundboard for it. So we're going to take care of that in a separate video. I cleaned the left flipper. I cleaned the left flipper switch a little bit, so let's see if that made the flipper work better. Oh, they want money. It wants credits. Can I reach and add some? Hmm. Y'all are just going to slide back. It's all right. I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. All right. Missed. Mm. That didn't last long. It's telling us all kinds of stuff on the screen there. It's like a whole book to read. He couldn't believe that I lost the ball that quick. playing with it too much. I'll tell you though, the left flipper is working good. I keep missing the skill shot. I want to make the wind coaster. I think that's what they call it. There we go. What a shot. What a cool shot. Missed it the third time. <laughs> I hate, I hate, I hate Peter Pan. You can't escape me, Peter. Yeah, I think it, I think the whole thing was that one transistor. Good 
I did make the skill shot, finally. This is a very cool game. If I was going to get... If I was going to get games for my home, this would definitely be one on the list. This is a, just a cool game. Nice theme, cool music, lots of toys. So if you're going to get a 90s game, this is one of them. Missed it. Wrong ramp. Multi ball. Good ball. Ooh. Well, that didn't last long. Boy, that wind coaster shot is cool. Uh. Oh. Little little jumpage there. That's playing great, folks. Hey, do you like uh, Hook? Do you, do you like Peter Pan? What would the world be like without Captain Hook? Ca Captain Hook? Do you like Peter Pan? Pan the man. That's what I was wondering. I was wondering if that was true. All right, so there you go, folks. That is the awesome hook pinball machine from the 90s. 92, 93? Um, just leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. If you remember playing this thing, we'll do another video whenever we get that soundboard in uh, on that separately just so we can show that thing off. There's a real sick soundboard that they make. There's only one that I know of that you can buy for this, and it's like super advanced. So we'll do a video on that. We will see you on the next one. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. I hope you enjoyed it, and make sure to check out my brother Donnie. He has his own channel here on YouTube. I think I mentioned it earlier. Uh, the link is down below, and we will see you on the next one.